Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be discussing the possible true cause of irritable bowel syndrome or IBS and some tips for actually correcting it. So for those of you that do not know, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome is a digestive disorder that is characterized by abdominal pain and usually fluctuating constipation and diarrhea. So it's sort of a very loose-ended digestive disorder. It really just seems to be like chronic digestive symptoms or symptoms of digestive dysfunction with no real known cause. It's not something that has a local or functional issue or problem. So there's no functional problem with the intestines or the gut or digestive organs at all. It seems to be something that is more driven by uh, psychosomatic factors, if anything, or particular key hormones that are secreted under stress. So because of the elusiveness of the cause of IBS, there's really no proper treatment that's out there. It can be very difficult to treat IBS. And usually most people that are diagnosed with it are just prescribed medications that don't really address the root cause. It sort of masks the symptoms, especially considering the fact that no one is really talking about a root cause or pointing to it. However, I've come across some research and from my understanding of the digestive system, the various hormones that affect digestive function, I think I have some possible insight as to perhaps the true culprit or true cause or one of the driving forces behind IBS. And from this point, we can have some better understanding about how to go about actually treating IBS. So if we take a look at this study here, it basically talks about the roles of serotonin, high levels of serotonin in the pathogenesis of irritable bowel syndrome. Now, one of the first things I just want to point out in this study is how it mentions that alterations in the biosynthesis of serotonin, its content, release, or reuptake may contribute to gastrointestinal dysfunction in hypersensitivity found in IBS patients. So in other words, there is some research that is finding that serotonin, the production of it and the reuptake of it may actually be something that is present in people with IBS and what's driving a lot of the symptoms and the major symptoms being dysmotility function. So problems with proper transit time, which is why you see in people with IBS having either loose stool or diarrhea or constipation and usually fluctuating between these two things, which is just indicative of poor digestive motility. So basically the transit time through the intestinal tract is abnormal or aberrated. When a person's consuming food, after they break it down the stomach, it's not properly leaving the body at a normal rate or time, which is usually about 12 to 24 hours from when you consume something. Your body goes through the entire digestive system, through the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the liver, the small intestine, the large intestine, and basically out through the body. It takes about 12 hours if the body is functioning functioning normally. However, if the person is either stressed or depressed, so they have something like low thyroid, this whole process tends to slow down. Or if somebody is overly stressed where they are stimulated or excited, these processes also become excitatory, which can lead to loose stool or diarrhea. And it seems to be in the people with IBS or an irritable bowel syndrome that these two states are constantly fluctuating. And one of the driving forces behind it may be high levels of serotonin. And this is because as the study states as well, serotonin is actually a major key player in proper peristalsis, which is the contraction and release of the colon. And as the study points out, serotonin, which is secreted by EC cells, actually is what initiates the peristaltic and secretory reflexes in the intestines. So in other words, the levels of serotonin in your body are going to directly affect the contraction and release of your colon. So if you're somebody that has really high levels of serotonin, which is common in people that consume either tons of grains, foods that are really high in tryptophan, a precursor to serotonin, or people that have any sort of digestive inflammation from consuming a low quality diet, these things are actually gonna increase the secretion of serotonin from the intestines, which can aberrate normal digestive motility or intestinal motility. So it can basically cause your intestines to spasm, to tighten and contract, which could lead to either constipation or diarrhea. And in fact, in the section of the study on serotonin and gastrointestinal motility in transit, it mentions how when secreted, serotonin can excite afferent nerves within the submucosal terminals, 
thus initiating the peristaltic reflux and modulating intestinal secretion. So if anything, this research points out the dominant roles that serotonin plays in peristaltic action, the contraction of the colon, and the secretion of the waste from the colon. And it appears to be that when chronically elevated, what happens is serotonin can aberrate normal intestinal motility, either causing the intestines to contract tightly, leading to constipation, or to become stimulated or excited, resulting in diarrhea. And one thing that we know about serotonin that isn't so commonly talked about, but something we've mentioned many times in videos on our channel, is that serotonin is an inflammatory mediator. And in fact, one of the major things that causes serotonin to become elevated in the first place is intestinal inflammation. When your intestines are inflamed, there's a greater production and secretion of serotonin. So when we talk about how to treat IBS, and if it's true that the cure is in the cause, we should really talk about how to correct high levels of serotonin. And what's interesting, as I just mentioned, one of the major reasons serotonin becomes chronically elevated in the first place is from inflammation in the intestines. The intestines produce about 80% or more of the body's serotonin and mostly under stress. So there's a lot of misinformation around serotonin. But the fact of the matter is, serotonin really is only chronically elevated when there's some sort of inflammation or stress in the intestines. So it's sort of a vicious cycle here where intestinal inflammation, usually caused by poor diet and stress, can increase the production of serotonin, which leads to the symptoms of IBS, mostly intestinal dysmotility, but once the irritable bowel syndrome sets in, this usually leads to poor digestive function, the inability to properly break down your food, and that's gonna result in more intestinal inflammation, which results in more serotonin and around the vicious cycle goes. But fortunately, there is a way to break the cycle. And what I see is that most of the time what is preceding the IBS is poor dietary choices and stressors that either cause your body to not properly break down the food that you're eating, even if it's healthy, or just because of consuming low quality food that doesn't properly break down. In either case, this is going to lead to fermentation in the gut, the production of inflammatory metabolites known as endotoxin, and inflammation to the intestines. So usually by correcting chronic stress, not eating while you're stressed is really important, and also making sure you're eating easy to digest foods that don't have an inflammatory effect on the intestines, while focusing on anti-inflammatory foods will correct the chronically high levels of serotonin, which should start to correct the digestive or intestinal dysmotility that's causing irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. So this is stuff we talk about in great detail in the Perfect Digestion course. You're gonna learn what foods to avoid, the foods that really cause gut irritation and inflammation that'd be contributing to high serotonin, what foods to eat that would counteract the effects of inflammation once you've reduced the cause of it, and then various lifestyle dietary and day-to-day -day things that you can do that would reduce your total stress so that way when you are eating a healthy diet, a proper diet, you're still digesting it. Because remember, your nervous system rules the digestive system. Even if you're eating the best diet in the world, if you're chronically stressed, your digestive system and its function is going to suffer. So these three things are imperative for correcting digestive issues all around. Now, I will just mention really quick that we have other videos that give tips on how to lower serotonin. So if you're interested in learning more about how you can lower high levels of serotonin, aside from correcting intestinal inflammation, definitely be sure to check out those videos as well. Otherwise, you'll learn all you need to know and more in the Perfect Digestion course, which you can find in the description box below. However, that does bring this video to a close, so if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, and for referencing the studies we've mentioned in this video, any of the online courses, or for checking out our blog and Tonic Herb Shop, you can find links to all these resources in the description box below.